All right, intro video for uh, a beautiful combination of tracts here at the Jesse James place. This is a little over 41 acres total. So what we're looking at, um, we've got toward the top, uh, the, the red rectangle, uh, 40 acre property. And then at the toward the bottom, we've got um, another red rectangle, smaller tract, a little over an acre in size. So uh, we're selling these together. Um, kind of the setup here at, at uh, the Jesse James project is this road on the south. Just to give you a quick rundown, you'll see more details uh, within the listing page. But this road on the south um, is going to be passable with a truck, an SUV, generally a car. Uh, you can pull your trailer, your camper, or whatnot out there to these to these tracks on the south up until you get to about this wide power easement. From then on, it transitions into more of a trail system. Uh, trails that have been in place for decades, they're, but they're designed for four-wheelers or side-by-sides. So you can get to this uh, this southern property, uh, you can pull your trailer in there, you can set up your home or your campsite or, or uh, your cabin or whatnot right there, uh, and then offload your four-wheeler or your side-by-side, -side, or potentially go on foot uh, back to your more private tract, um, which would, in this case would be the 40 acres up here. Uh, so. Uh, on the 40, obviously hunting, camping, recreation, all that good stuff is amazing. Um, e either tract is buildable. It's just that the, the 40 on the north really wouldn't be suitable for a year-round home because you're, you're, when you come and go to town a couple times a day, you'd be taking your four-wheeler or your side-by-side -side on the trail system um, in order to, to get to and from this property. So uh, the, the 40 more suitable for, for recreation. Um, and the one acre, the one plus acre as well, obviously suitable for recreation too. But uh, if you want to build a, an actual home or a cabin, uh, a place to, to stick your RV or, or whatnot and use it, um, then this tract on the south would be more suitable, much more suitable for that. Uh, so let's look at this. Um, we'll zoom out just briefly, and I'll actually turn some of these layers off. We're using the MapRite program, and you'll see this same program, excuse me, the same map within the listing page uh, for the property. So we'll just zoom out a little bit. Um, so about maybe five miles, a little less to the northwest, you got Dixon, Missouri, small town, but it does have uh, gas stations, restaurants, you know, a parts store, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you go about three miles southeast, and you've got the Gasconade River, which is awesome for fishing and, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And then if we pan out a little more, you've got I-44. In fact, let's just go way out while we're at it, <laughs> since we're already back here. Okay, so if you can still see toward the middle of the screen, there's the property. Uh, once you hit I-44, you're only a couple hours out of St. Louis, which is to the northeast up here, or about an hour and a half out of Springfield, Missouri, which is to the southwest. Uh, also, once you hit I-44, you're just a few minutes from Rolla, which is a big regional city. Um, and then if you go the other direction, you've got St. Robert and Waynesville. So there's a, a lot going on in this area. That's why we're so excited to be able to find a, uh, a wooded property, uh, you know, this private and secluded with this kind of hunting and recreation um, in this area. Pretty, pretty unique deal, we think. Okay, so the blue lines, of course, are the creeks. Um, this South Creek is what we call James Creek. Uh, and this other creek is Mill Creek. So they flow right into the Gasconade, about two miles east of here. And why don't we turn the road system back on? Do, 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 do. How do we do that? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so, whoops, nothing happened. Let me try that one more time. Well, something should have happened. There, it's coming up. So, all the tracks, of course, at the Jesse James Project do have guaranteed legal access uh, via the roads that are in place. Uh, so, you're covered there. Uh, why don't we start with, uh, let's start with Tract 1, since we're already at that, in that area. So to get to Tract 1, here's Cactus Road, that's the county road. You'll take the, uh, the easement road off of Cactus. It goes between two really beautiful meadows, uh, and then cuts to the right. You'll see that big pond to the left, so you kind of know you're in the right spot, although there are quite a few ponds around here. Um, Easement road, when you get out there, depending on how soon you get out there, uh, it still might be in the process of being improved. So this first section of road, as we mentioned, from the county road, past the property, going to this big power line easement, that's going to be drivable with the truck, with an SUV, and generally with a car once it's been improved. 
Uh, so we're, we're trying to get somebody out there with, with uh, equipment, uh, the, the dozers and trucks and whatnot, to improve that section of the road. It's drivable now. I mean, we, the guys are out there every day, but they are in trucks and have had to use four-wheel drive a couple times. So in the near future, that portion will be improved. Uh, but once again, keep in mind that once you get to this power line, it's going to be four-wheel drive, uh, not four-wheel drive. Well, you want four-wheel drive on your four-wheeler uh, or your side-by-side because -side, that's a trail system after that. Okay, so coming into the property... So track to L is kind of a special one. It's one of the few tracks that's that's mostly uh, open meadow or pasture, as you can see here. Uh, it's got some trees just to make it interesting, but the bulk of it, 90% of this property is open meadow or pasture. Um, the map right program that we're using has different base maps, and you can switch to different layers. Um, I'll mention that since since map right is pulling these base maps from base maps from different sources they were often taken several years apart, the, the aerial photos. So in this case, this one that's labeled MB Satellite is probably the most recent uh, because we know from clicking on one of these, let's try the Google map. So that shows some piles of timber. Um, so when this was all a big lodge uh, a couple years ago or whatnot, um, at one point, the lodge owners were, were kind of improving this meadow, and they took out some of the smaller trees. So you can see that in this Google area, which is a couple years old. Uh, you can see that these, these trees, it, it, they, they didn't log it. Uh, they just kind of pushed the timber with the dozer, pushed it off into piles on the side, and you can see that. And in fact, if we switch, I think, to the infrared on this one, that's several years old, and that's showing that there, there used to be uh, small timber all over this, but they spent thousands of dollars and, and turned that into a more improved pasture. So in this case, the MB satellite is the most accurate. Uh, it's going to be mostly open grass. I'm sure it'll have to be brush hog, uh, but potential for just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, setting out there. It could, once it's brush hogged a couple times, you can almost maintain it like a lawn, I would imagine. Um, let's try the hex 30 layer. That's often Okay, so that's very detailed, but that's that was probably taken shortly after it was all turned into pasture, uh, because it hasn't quite grown up into grass in all the spots yet. And you'll you'll notice when you see the drone video that it definitely has now. It's it's beautiful on this property. And why don't we take a look at the topo map too? So this tract, and you'll see it on the drone video as well. It lays really really nicely. Um, zoom out a little bit. Uh, we can kind of tell just by being familiar with topo maps that it, it's it's the highest uh, at the west side and then slopes down gradually as you go easterly, but it's a gradual slope. I mean, there are certainly level areas on this property that uh, that would be called either level or very gently sloping, so it's going to be basically all usable. Go back to a satellite. And again, you can check out the drone video uh, for this particular tract in the listing page. You can get a good look at the aerial. Uh, but again, uh, if you're uh, if you're looking for a place to to actually build um, a cabin or a home, this particular tract would be would be suitable for that. Um, powers nearby uh, within a half a mile. Um, we've got good cell service out there uh, on this property, and then uh, use your four wheeler or your side by side or whatnot to uh, to venture back into your larger tract, your your forty acre tract. So let's go look at that. Okay. So to get to the 40, hop in your side-by-side -side or in your four-wheeler, head east. Uh, you're definitely going to need it once you get past this power line, big power line easement because it does become a trail system. Uh, the way we would generally go is, uh, this is a hill, go down this hill, cross over James Creek, go up the hill to the other side, and then you've, you've actually got a couple options on this one once you get to the top of this hill. Um, the way that we went last time was we just went straight, went down another hill, you cross Mill Creek, and continue on that easement road, and then you come into the east side of the 40 acres. There we go. Whoa! Oh no. Uh oh. The internet's been just a little goofy today, so please bear with us as we try to make this work. Okay. Uh, so the 40 acres, uh, spectacular property. Uh, it's probably. A good 90% wooded, about 10% open meadow. Uh, got basically two or three um, open meadows up here toward the northwest. Mill Creek runs directly across the entire property. 
so over a quarter mile of frontage uh, of direct Mill Creek frontage, and you actually have both sides. Um, so about the last 10 years, um, if everything we've been seeing um, often when when someone when a realtor or a broker or whatever is listing a property, um, if they're if they own both sides of the creek, then they basically double the frontage because it uh, it is very possible to only own one side of the creek. In this case, you have both sides. So uh, certainly some people would call that over a half mile of frontage. Uh, but either way, you've got over a quarter mile of, of actual Mill Creek, and you do have both sides of it on the property. Um, several different uh, easement trails, so you, you have good access um, via the four-wheeler or the side-by-side -side to several different parts of the property. And, oh, live spring. Uh, so the guys, when they were out there, um, I believe they were, they were on this little easement road in the four-wheeler, and they kept seeing this this uh, uh, look like a tiny creek or whatever crossing the, the easement road and feeding into Mill Creek. And they assumed it was one of these creek beds up here. Uh, there's another um, gravel creek bed up here on the property. But as they went up there, they noticed that in that particular creek bed, um, there was no water. So on their way back down, they kind of forgot about it. And then they crossed over that running water again and uh, basically said, you know what, let's let's investigate that. And so they stopped, they got out and walked and kind of tracked that, that running water back up and tracked it to a live spring coming out of a hillside uh, on the east side of this property. Let's switch to the hex because that's going to be more detailed here. There we go. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, again, any live spring, any creek, we have no idea if it's year round. Uh, it, was, it was flowing heavily when they were out there. I think they got a video of it actually. I, it comes right out of the, the base of this hillside, um, maybe 50 feet off the easement road, and then flows down, crosses over the easement road, and into Mill Creek. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Pretty cool to have that on a property. Uh, why don't we go to a topo map, and we'll kind of show you topography on this tract. There we go. Uh, topo maps are confusing, and this is no exception. Um, but it's it's pretty pretty uh, pretty much pure Ozarks. You've got flat areas. You've got very steep areas. You've got everything in between on this. Uh, the blue lines you see here on the topo are indicative of creek beds. This will be Mill Creek running easterly through there. This is some unnamed creek bed that that um, kind of goes southerly into Mill Creek. Uh, so this this smaller creek bed. Uh, has been dry when we've been out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a very obvious creek bed. It's it's about 10 feet wide. It's gravel. It's an obvious creek bed, but it's been dry when we've been out there. It, it clearly will have water in it uh, at different times throughout the year. Uh, Mill Creek has been flowing to some extent every time we've been out there. Um, there have been sections in Mill Creek. Uh, I don't know if it's on this property, but on other tracks where it'll be flowing in one spot. It'll be dry for 100 feet. It'll be flowing in another spot. And that, again, is typical of creeks in the Ozarks where they, they actually flow underground and then pop back up um, just depending on uh, the, the time of year, the, the amount of rainfall, and, and whatnot. Uh, so you may see that when you're out there. Um, so, it, again, we don't say anything is year-round. Uh, no creeks, no springs. We, we, just, we just don't. We don't want to jinx it for anybody. Uh, in this case, in Mill Creek, it's the same. Um, we have seen uh, quite a few minnows in Mill Creek, which is a good sign that, you know, there's probably water in there more often than not, or at least pools of water to support those minnows. Okay, so we're showing the, we're showing the live spring. All right, so let's see as far as topography. Obviously, the lowest in the creek bed, in this case, the lowest in Mill Creek. As you go north and south, it rises up. And a quick primer on topo maps, the, the lines are contour lines showing a change in elevation. Um, if we zoom out a little bit. So this particular topo map, it was actually a little confusing for us at first um, because on the majority of topo maps, each contour line indicates a 20 foot elevation change. And it, it didn't really make sense to us because we had been out uh, on this property, we had, we had been all over the place and we're looking at the topo map and it it showed it being super steep in spots, and we were just like, man, it didn't didn't seem that steep when we were out there. I mean, it's the Ozarks, but it didn't seem that steep. We finally figured out, for whatever reason, on this particular topo map, um, it is not a 20-foot elevation change between the lines. It's a 10-foot change. 
So if you stack this up to almost every other topo map we used, this makes it look twice as steep as it actually is. Uh, so it, uh, in this case, where normally the, the elevation change between two lines would be 20 feet, on this map it's 10. So all, all, all we're leading into with that is if you've been following our, our website for a while, looking at topo maps, uh, this one looks about twice as steep as it actually is. Though it, it certainly it does have steep areas, has level areas, all that good stuff, uh, but the elevation change on this map is 10 feet between lines, not 20. Uh, but the idea is still the same. When the lines are further apart, the property's more level. When they're closer, it's it's steeper. Anytime you've got lines stacked on other lines, uh, that's probably a bluff or close to a bluff. So here on the southern section, you've got um, uh, an area that's probably basically a bluff. Um, the same on this this portion to the north of the spring. And then you have other areas where the lines, uh, you can kind of start to read the topo line just like you're looking at the ground, the, the topo map. And this is kind of a, a ridge that goes up to the southwest side. This is a, a small um, valley or, or called a draw, uh, which very likely has some type of, uh, of spring, which feeds down into the creek. You see that all the time in these, in these little draws. Um, from the meadow areas here, as you go up to the northwest side, uh, it's following this kind of gradual ridge going up there. Uh, this particular road that, that cuts up to the north and then east, that goes up a, a hillside and then actually uh, comes into a level area on the northeast, which could potentially be a nice uh, area to, to put a very private site. You've got a large level area there. Uh, there there's a lot going on with this property, so uh, it's going to take someone a lot of time to really explore it and, and check it out. There we go. So again, uh, you'll see basically the same interactive map on the listing page for these tracts. Uh, it's it's super fun, or for us, we're kind of map nerds, I guess. It's fun to to zoom in and out and play around and, and change the base layers and look at the area, look at the town, see what's going on, check out the rivers and whatnot. We didn't even mention that this is within um, about 10, 15 miles of the Mark Twain National Forest, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of additional land that generally open for, uh, for hunting and uh, camping and trail riding and all that good stuff. Uh, odds are, uh, I mean, with your, your 40 acres back here in this area, you just won't ever need another place to hunt, um, especially if you do any kind of, um, you know, food plot preparation or, or anything like that. But uh, even with, with no preparation, I mean, the deer and the turkey out here are phenomenal. We had been hearing it from everybody um, prior to doing this project. And uh, once we got started, we were like, oh, everybody's right. This, this is unbelievable. So uh, we're super excited about this. Uh, check out, if you're not already on the listing page, uh, check out the listing page to see more details. We'll have, uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, separate videos for the 40 acre tract, for the one plus acre tract. You can dig into those and check those out. And if you have any questions at all, uh, just let us know. We would love to chat with you about, uh, about these tracks.